Welcome back, viewers of my channel. Here in the Diecast Museum, specifically the Hot Wheels room, we are looking at a big box of old Johnny Lightnings and a few racing champion cars. These, from what I can tell, just looking through the surface, are all from before the year 2000 or thereabouts. 1990s for the most part. So we're going to be looking at some semi-vintage muscle cars, drag strip cars. Who knows what's in this big box? It's quite heavy. And it has been quite a while since I packed it. These were gifts over the years from viewers and friends of my channel here. Stephen and Peter in Australia. And they just never made it into the collection. I was a bit... Uh, slow to review everything and never really was able to catch up with the sheer quantity of uh, cars or just it seemed that way anyway so going to look into this a second time the last time i filmed these cars in the mystery unboxing video uh, when i received these from stephen and peter was years ago so it's going to be fun to go back through this and see what i'm going to be opening up today in this video but mainly just looking at some very cool and nostalgic card art, as well as some really cool cars. Most of these I would consider openers because the cardboard is pretty uh, weathered. It's a little ragged. So it should be fun to pick out some cars to open. Maybe some of them in this video and some more in the next video. And uh, let's just see what we find in this double mystery box unboxing. Now, this is probably going to be a long video, but I'll try to move through these cars as quickly as I can. Check out the artwork. These are acclaimed photographs, and the story is on the back. And I really won't have time to read all of this, but these are pretty old packagings. Back when Johnny Lightning was owned by Playing Mantis. Uh, these are one of 20,000 cars. And it's called the Dragsters lineup, so you can kind of read through this or pause on it. A bit at a time, collect all 11 Johnny Lightning Dragsters USA. And there are the cars listed. Copyright 1995 by Playing Mantis. And the uh, Join the Club. If you like high quality die cast replicas. So this is old and outdated information back when you'd send a check. Uh, or money order or whatever. Quite old. Even the castings are quite old. And a little bit more primitive <laughs> by some means than what we've seen released by Johnny Lightning today. And of course, Johnny Lightning has changed owners a couple of times and uh, that kind of shows in their casting. So this one, what is this casting of? Uh, let's see, what kind of car is this? Doesn't really say immediately on here, just that it's a 72 Chai Town Hustler and unfortunately, I am not familiar with these drag strip cars, as I don't really follow a lot of drag strip. And um, anyways, pretty neat stuff. I may open these cars up at some point. Um, I don't really have space on the walls right now to display them, because there are going to be a lot of cars that are older castings by Johnny Lightning that, as you'll see, are a little, just they look older. They don't quite fit in with the new Johnny Lightning stuff. Artwork is going to be different for each car, as it has, um, and funny, it's not actually the car in the package, but just an iconic drag race scene somewhere in the United States of America. Big Daddy, Don Garlitz, I'm not even going to try and say all these names because I'm definitely going to mess them up. I really don't want to offend anyone, but uh, very cool paint jobs and graphics on these Johnny Lightning cars. And, as I said, it's just a mixture, a hodgepodge of older things in here. Saturday Night Evening Post. Um, there's some of the vehicles in that collection. You can pause on that. Interesting, it has French in here, and these came from Australia. What's the copyright? Does it really matter? I don't know. I'd like to get some sort of basis. I see 2005 there, so this one might not be as old as I thought. And we've got Trivial Pursuit, Classic Edition, Release 1. What kind of car is this? 
500 special, so it's part of the Indy 500. And I never really collected the Trivial Pursuit Saturday Evening Post or Monopoly cars. Because I like the realistic paint jobs, but, you know, here's a realistic paint job. And as you can see, the blisters are pretty tough on some of these cars. Likely seeing a little bit of sun. Limited edition is one of only 12,500. Now, that isn't that many, but it's quite a few for a company just starting out. Well, you know, kind of just starting out getting popular back in the mid-90s or so. And the copyright on this one, 1997, right there. So, all metal, rubber tires still. We're going to jump around a little bit again. Some more. Here is a Racing Champions. Rages 5 and up, limited edition, bad gas or die cast, some cool graphics, but a really cheesy looking casting here by Racing Champions. It's just very big and bloated, not, not at all trying to be scale with anything else, and it's just kind of weird looking. I don't know, something about it. The tires, the wheels, plastic base, and uh, I guess these were aimed more at kids back then, whereas Racing Champions is a lot more on par with Johnny Lightning of today, which is quite detailed. Um, opening parts, of course, still, but all metal, rubber tires. Anyways, here's another car, same kind of, same car, 58 Corvette. Uh, this one by Johnny Lightning. So the packaging is probably going to be the same. And there's a whole blurb there on Corvettes and, of course, all the other Corvettes. Collect all 10. Okay, they're not all Corvettes, they're Chevys, I think, is the uh, theme there. But check out those two cars. Isn't that weird? <laughs> they don't look like they would sit very well next to each other on a display case. Well, they're not the same year of car, actually. Different years, but just should be about the same size. Definitely not. I don't know. If you guys watch my videos enough, you'll know that it kind of bothers me when cars are way out of scale with each other. Uh, which, of course, is typical of Matchbox and Hot Wheels. But for the premium cars like Auto World, Green Light m2 these days even well not johnny lightning but all those other three they're like true 164 scale which is really cool i like to see this actual size of the cars represented next to each other and uh here we have yet another dragsters car so may have a fairly complete collection of those 11 what a strange number of cars once again and this one doesn't actually have an interior it's like a opaque window very simple chassis no Significant amount of details for the drivetrain as we often see on newer models. So like here's a slightly newer model. Again, not too much detail on Johnny Lightning, but nice heavy casting with an opening hood. And this again is from that Saturday Evening Post collection. There's that truck. Maybe I'll try and put these a little in order over beside me, but uh, I'm not sure. We're going to figure out what's going to be opened. I really do like these vans, these 75 Chevy vans. And it is neat to see the uh, the old artwork here on here. And that is pretty cool. So, America's Oldest Magazine. Um, just lots of information. Moving right along. More cars than can appear on the back. Here is another post. And it looks like this little insert is supposed to look like the magazine. So that's kind of neat. But the car's graphics, not very realistic for me. Love the cars. The content is just a little off for my sort of collecting. And uh, I love the cars, though. Really nice. And the artwork, too. I mean, uh, what is that guy's name? I'm thinking of it, but I just, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember who drew this art. Very classic uh, Norman Rockwell, my goodness, I was having struggling there. Norman Rockwell, I believe, is the artist of all this evening post, Saturday evening post. Here we have some more dragsters. Now, this one's a little different, but again, 20,000. Saw this artwork already. Different car, though, Wild Willie Borsch and Father Time. This one's got a neat little story in the back. I was just kind of sifting through before I started filming. 1997. Very kind of cool cartoon artwork. And uh, you can read some of the story of how this drag strip came together. And look for other Johnny Lightning award-winning die cast. 
Okay, so we're going to do a different style of cars down here. I'm going to make a little bit of room toward my right before we continue here. And we continue to delve a little deeper here. These might not be quite as old. This is more familiar to the Johnny Lightning that I started collecting, which was probably around 2005. Uh, 2002 is what it says here. So still playing Mantis, I believe. Little old story on Volkswagens. Collect all six in this series. Brand new club car, 99 Mustang by the looks of it. And so there you go, Volkswagen 66 21 window Samba bus. So this I'm going to open up. Packaging's not bad, it's a little wild, but I mean, it's pretty good. It's got some creasing. Anyways, I've always opened my Johnny Lightning, so time to show that one the light of day. We'll get it somewhere in the collection. Same true for this very cool old hot rod. And what kind of hot rod is it? The 32 High Boy. What does it say on the back there? We brought you 10 of America's favorite hot rods. Very cool. And that one also from... Oh, that one's from 2000. 24 years in the package. That's going to be opened up. Got a few gassers here. The Wee Willy, owned by Tom Clinton. And that's pretty neat. That's an actual car. Some more information and some other willies. In the collection that one from 2001 actually there's quite a few willies here i think these are all willies willies gassers yeah we're in the willies gasser series i may actually have all six so we'll just kind of cruise through these because the art's going to be on same on all of them check out the funky paint job on this one now it's neat because the actual car is shown in the background and thankfully it's a card insert so you can keep those a little easier without having to keep all the packaging if your packaging's kind of roached or you just want a smaller footprint for your display so i'll be opening up these cars as well and you know i'll probably open up everything actually just it's not going to happen in this video because it will take up way too much time but some beautiful cars here and really cool to know they're the real real deal would be interesting to look up these cars and see if they still exist somewhere or if, you know what happened to them if nothing else bell engine services owner brent harris given these owners would be a bit older now that we're looking at these a couple decades later now we got the coca-cola delivery vehicle series and it looks like there's a whole bunch of them pretty cool scales are all over the place of course check it out anyways let's just have a look at the date on this 2004 playing mantis yeah, let's zoom in on the english here some french below that story in coca-cola let's make some room for these so we've got the 1933 ford panel delivery with the chopped roof very neat and the international truck so we know it's probably the late 90s this is a neat collection with some really desirable castings for me anyways i really like these big vans as i said before with the saturday night post another 55 ford panel delivery also very cool um, again i don't normally collect coca-cola too much or any soft drink sort of label livery sort of vehicles Winter classics, Santa things, that sort of thing. Looking for the realistic ones. But with a van, to me, it looks you know like it's something that could have existed back in the day as a delivery vehicle of Coca-Cola products. The older ones, not so likely to be delivering Coca-Cola with this sort of paint job and customization. Nice little steely wheels and interesting vehicles. 1940 Ford sedan delivery. Here we have the 1976 Dodge van. Enjoy Coca-Cola. Enjoy it. Well, I don't know about that. I like to enjoy a glass of water. But anyways, to each their own. 1933 Willie's panel van. Very souped up. It's a neat casting. Probably an older Johnny Lightning casting. Some of these would have been new-ish. Circa 2004. Ah, I like this truck as well. The 62 Studebaker. Really neat. Although, wish they had made those 
side vent windows not cast solid. Opening hood on that model. Newer van, 1998 GMC delivery van. So that's pretty nice. Scale is quite small. More like HO scale train. And we've got the 1966 Dodge A100 with the jump seats. Super cool vehicle. like those ones as well. Okay, we're into yet a few more series. It looks like I was a little bit organized when putting these away. And what do we got here? A two-pack. 67 Firebird and the 2001 Firebird. Yesterday and today it's called. Very nice Johnny Lightning castings there. I think we're definitely going to be opening that up. Not I think that one's getting opened up. But it's got some cool history on the cars. And there were some other cars in the series. Looks like Mustangs. Firebirds. And yeah, that's a billboard. So you can actually put that on a shelf somewhere. It's going to look pretty neat. Definitely going to open that one up. And ooh, what are these? Digging a little deeper here than I was able to explore before deciding to film this box yet again. Not yet again. I filmed these cars coming out of multiple boxes years ago, but not to this degree. It was more of an overwhelmed, whoa, look how much stuff Steve and Pete sent me. But this time, we're going to take a good look at each of the cars, as you can tell. And we've got the Rock and Roller. Is that an actual... It's an actual disc. It's not even a piece of cardboard. we got some music on here. Yes, we do. We've got a few songs. Wow, and I still have a CD player, so that's that's kind of fun. I'm going to be listening to that because these are, I think, would be kind of fun to open up. Why not, eh? Sun City. And uh, fun, fun, fun. Oh, I see. You've got one song. I think you only get one song per CD. The Beach Boys, fun, fun, fun on this car. So not practical be changing a disc every time for one song six was pretty bad one though <laughs> okay they're gonna be fun to open up and uh, some nice decorations more than anything uh, with these discs because really you could just probably download them or burn a disc yourself with a CD burner and put 18 20 songs on a disc at least so here we have and what year were those from I just want to back up because that's pretty pretty crazy um somewhere in the fine print 2000 it says emmy capital music i guess it's about then street freaks the spoilers so street freaks had six different sub series within the street freaks main series of six cars released each time that they made a box of these so this is from 2016 not that old i guess eight years old and the spoilers is one of them uh, well, maybe not six series. Zingers, Spoilers, American Glory, and Black with Flame. So there's the other cars you could get. And there is the back of the artwork. This is a resealable package, it says. How to take your favorite diecast collectors out of the bubble for play and snap them back in for display. Could do that. Could do that. I don't know. I'm just going to keep the card back, though. It's not too much going on with this artwork here. And we've got some other cars here johnny lightning rc2 rc2 bought johnny lightning branding from playing mantis i believe and that was around 2005 if i'm not mistaken 2007 is a copyright on this car again this is when i was really starting to heavily collect johnny lightning because the castings were definitely getting more realistic if we're going to go back and compare it to the first cars that i just took off the top of this box um pretty pretty realistic let's see there's like an older casting now that's a, a gas or so it's not really a fair comparison completely fair but a lot more details the you can see with the wheels and the tires and the interior it's all quite nice bulky packaging though very bulky uh looks good when it's nice and scratch free but it is extremely robust these cars were designed to get to you safely and stay you know good looking for years and it still does look great it's just there's a lot of branding and, and a very small partition of the car with the die cast whereas newer johnny lightning cars t tend to have a bigger image of the actual car and less plastic kind of glare 
to deal with. But these are really nice, and I certainly collected a lot of these cars around this time, which make up the bulk of my loose Johnny Lightning collection in the remainder of the Diecast Museum. So those are all for sure going to get opened up. And if this video runs on towards 30 minutes, which it looks like it probably will, it's going to be a part two, I suppose. Part two, opening up all the Johnny Lightning cars. Here we have a 92 official pace car Cadillac Atlanta. I believe it's a 92. Yeah, there it is. Pretty cool car. Limited production. And there's a little bit of history on that. Uh, we're getting back into some funny cars I can see just below this. So we'll continue to go through. Now, that is sweet. That definitely needs to get opened up. And the classic gold series, RC2 again. Uh, that's the 65 Shelby Cobra Daytona. Well, it looks like an ultra raw or something because it doesn't have any paint on it. Not sure. Oh, learning curve. So learning curve, 2007. I think, yeah, that learning curve was a subsidiary of RC2, I do believe. I might be getting that backwards. Doesn't really matter. I mean, Johnny Lightning has always been Johnny Lightning. That's how you're going to find these cars if you're searching for them. Secondary market online. Otherwise, flea markets. And antique stores, you'll find these cars pretty regularly. 59 Cadillac Eldorado, that's a beautiful casting. It is quite a small scale, but it's a really nice, authentic paint job. So we're into the gassers, and with that, we're going to make some more room. Willie's Gassers, this must be from a second or third release of this series. I'm not sure. 1941 Willys Gasser driver named as well. And I do believe different year and different cars for sure. All Willys. This is a uh, Patriot Puzzle Muscle Cars. Must have been a different release. So many things available over the years. Impossible to keep up with everything. 2002. 22 years in the packaging that'll be getting opened and whoa we've got a whole bunch of interesting things here check this out hot rods now this i like i like the artwork with a big picture of the original monte carlo there one of twenty thousand. it's in pretty decent condition it's got a bent corner the beast mobile collector number 49 um it's got plastic wheels a little bit more of a simplistic mold it's one of the older ones where the tires were really thick and not too realistic but still kind of neat and uh that's going to be probably something i'm going to want to open up i just don't have the space to display this much cardboard especially if it's not like mint and uh you know it doesn't need to necessarily be mint but it certainly helps for displayability in the packaging and here we have surf rods. So much to take in here. Sometimes I find myself lost for words. Coast Busters. <laughs> Coast Busters, that's awesome. Play on Ghost Busters, perhaps. A couple surfboards. And uh, the Endless Summer of 60s Surfing. Wow. What do we got here? 1969 to the 1960 to 1969, the golden age of surfing. Once the sport of Polynesian kings, 1960s Hawaii and Southern California became meccas for surfers searching for endless summers. Wow. Okay. Lots of cool information there. Collect all 18 surf rods. Look at them all. My goodness. Here we got Coast Busters coming in at number four. The big kahuna. Um, major surfing beaches. What's the copyright in this? 2000. 24 years old. Super cool. Here's another one. So surfboards are the norm. Ooh, look at the paint chips that's on the outside from all the loose die casts that Steve and Pete sent me along with this large supply of semi-vintage Johnny Lightning in the packages. Check out the size of the card art on this one. This is standard size. So they're getting bigger. Some of them are getting quite big. I have to hold them back a little farther and uh, take a look at it that way. But we've got the real car there. Looks a little different. Hard to say it's a night shot. 
but holy smokes i feel like these cards are gonna look terrific out of the packaging and i'll just prop the little card behind them the artwork is cool funny card legends but you know just it takes up so much space 12 funny card legends to collect in this particular series Another story. Oh, it looks like the same story. The blat, blat, blat story with the exhaust sounds. News flash. It's like a Johnny Lightning official club with magazine. Really neat. Very, a very textile time to collect. A lot of paper and cardboard and, and uh, things to collect. 1999, so these are going way back. Way back playback. Another funny car, Legends. I like how the artwork is different. Again, and these are the actual car. Don Schumacher's Stardust. There it is. Don't go too close to the water there. I don't think it's going to find its way out. The wheels don't look the same as the car in the picture. That would have been nice to have matched. Oh, well, pretty cool. Now, these cars are going to have opening bodies. and show the frame and all the rest imagine the back artwork is going to be the same here we have another brand of racing or playing mantis johnny lightnings racing machines and funny car legends so two different series but kind of the same idea don schumacher's wonder wagon so sponsored by probably wonder bread based on the kind of iconic paint jobs it's like an elongated Camaro, 70s Camaro perhaps, late 60s, 73 it says, 73 Camaro, if I'm recognizing the lights properly. Uh, we've got some more hot rods to add with this funky neon pink Monte Carlo, check it out. Got a... Okay, so the Monte Carlo pink is the same on all the Monte Carlos, different colors available of the Beast Mobile. So the actual Beast Mobile was probably the pink one. And Johnny Layton just chose to recolor some of these. If not all of them. Because we have the Franken Stewed. So it's a modified Stewed Baker. Number, collect number 50. Is that to assume there's 50 different cars here from the Hot Rod series? With 20,000 of each. Authentic replicas of real street rods. Very cool looking car, I have to say. And... Nice representation by Johnny Lightning on this one. Check out the wheels do match. Whoa, check out the real deal. That is insane. That is absolutely insane to see these custom cars. Love seeing custom cars, especially from years gone by. The different artistic flavors that went into these cars. Never mind being drag racing cars. Look at the paint job on this uh, Pontiac GTO. The Going Goat. And we've got a green one here. Eye splitting green, I'm going to call it. A little dusty, so it's going to be super nice to get all these cars out of the package. A few more drag racer cars here. Sift through. Dragsters USA Blue Max with the Chai Town Hustler, or is it the Chi Town? Goodyear and Revel. So these were model kits. Revel made 124 scale Revel model kits over the years and you probably can still get them to paint up and decorate yourself what year are these ones um oh these are the collect 11 again so probably the same just got them kind of split up it's good to have put them all back together again the 71 revolution revolution it says on the side there the car is Funny they didn't put the cars with the right pictures. We got Blue Max up here. So just a couple kind of staple cars used for the card backs on these. And some of the cars depicted, but not with the correct paint jobs. The livery does seem to be the same. And uh Color Me Gone. This uh Dodge Challenger. And we've got Mr. Norm's Charger. Dodge Charger, that's what that car is. Grand Spalding Dodge. So these are going to look nice all next to each other. Got to make some sort of display. A much newer funny car here. Dragsters. Same artwork. One of 12,000 on this one, one of 15,000 on this one. Probably a different year. 
Different amount of cars. Got the driver names, sponsor names. Authentic replicas of famous funny cars of the 90s. So this is a different than the cars we were just looking at. Speeds up to 300 miles per hour. That's 500 kph for uh, my fellow Canadians. Others that use kilometers per hour. Paint jobs. Wow. Okay. Not sure what year that was. Oh, probably up there in the fine print. 1997. All right, got a bit of room here. And then we're back into some more hot rods. Wow, just a lot of hot rods. So here we have a very unique looking Thunderbird. The Bad Bird, it's called. Wow, that is really crazy. Check out this Chevelle. 66 Pro Street. I think it's that. I think that's a Chevelle. Chevelle SS. Super cool. Definitely need to make some more room. We're down to the last two layers here, and it looks like a lot of hot rod cars. 69 Pro Street Camaro SS, number 41. And I noticed that some of these are limited to 17,500, while others are limited to 20,000. So it tells me they must have been released over two years, although same collection, 1 to 50. Here we have the Rumbler, very cool custom wagon. Looks like it may have been shortened, and there's the real deal. Um, let's see, the copyright on this one, 19, not 1962, 1997, and 1997. So... Unsure as to why the change in production. Maybe they were selling better and they need to make more, or maybe it was the other way around. Here we have the Flathead Flyer. Some really cool castings. 69 Pro Street, so we've got another one of those Camaros. Blue. And the Bad Bird in gold. The Bad Bird in blue. Much like the actual car. Okay, we've got a few bad birds. Bad bird in red. Bad bird in aqua. And wow, different collector numbers. 12 and 40. So re-releasing those collector numbers. There you go. Two different collections. So, not sure why the copyright didn't change in the back. Probably just cardboard copyright information wasn't translated year after year. Here we have True Grit. Check out the cardboard. Looks like some diamond plate metal. That's pretty neat. Almost looks like it should be reflective, but it's not. We got that big international truck. Not really big. Copy or uh, scale is quite small. Copyright 2000. And some more um, sales adverts for the Giant Lightning Collector Club. Breaking new ground, really. Okay. And some vans. We've got a whole bunch of vans. Those GMC Savannah vans, I think they were called. From True Grit. Hooker headers. Flame paint job on this one. It's a Chevrolet. Two vans left. It looks like there's some sort of playset down the bottom. I actually don't remember what's in there. Rice Krispies. Is that a Grumham? I'm not really sure what kind of van that is. Might be a... Chevy, I don't know. Someone will let me know in the comments, maybe. Thank you if you do. Curious as to... This seems like a very recognizable van from yesteryear. Um, I don't remember what it is. And, okay, let's get the box out of the way. This is what we could see on the back. Authentic die-cast replicas of history's greatest legends. And then we've got this information, news flash. I have to zoom back out a little bit here. That's the back of the cardboard. It's a big set from 1996. Classic Customs Corvette Authentic Replicas Collector's Edition. Whoa, check it out. Let's get some uh, clarity here. Mirror-like reflective finish in there. Pretty dazzling. Some interesting Corvettes, including a concept. 
Now the quality of these castings is a little less than what I've come to expect with the newer release of Johnny Lightning. I mean, look at the fender well clearances there. Some interesting castings you won't find from Johnny Lightnings anymore. And there are the cars featured. The Corvette Indy concept car. Very neat. I really like that 54 Chevy Nomad and the 80 Aero Vet. So they're all named here. Kind of toyish looking. Oh, the Stingray 3. That's another concept car. Okay, so there you go. That's, that's uh, an interesting set. I'm not sure if I can open that up or not, what to do with that. It certainly is cool. All right. So we've got lots of cars spread out here. I've just been tucking the rest of the cars down over here. And these are what I have to open up. I've sorted them by what seems to be release codes, release years, or collector series and sort of in a chronological order of sorts. So that is a lot of cars that we have to open up, don't we, Nina? Yes, we do. Now, more importantly, where are they all going to go? Because the Hot Wheels Museum is full of Hot Wheels, and that's the way it's going to stay. Got the Hot Wheels Premium Wall, which has vacancy, but that's intended for Hot Wheels cars only. We go over into the rest of the museum. Got Johnny Lightning, some of my favorite models. These are the ones I've personally purchased over the years and kept the uh, cardboard and packaging in pristine condition. So it's really nice and clear. I don't know that I would ever open up these models. I mean, I should never say never. Never say never. More Johnny Lightning still along the wall. And so you can see that's about the only packaged cars I have. Some more over here in the corner. Auto World. And then this is just a mixture of kind of specialty and chase cars or anything that really catches my eye. A little dim in here, but this is the Johnny Lightning wall. And that is pretty much full of cars. So very few spaces to get any more cars in there. And then, of course, we're into... M2 trucks, square body, a shelf with green lights, M2s, some Auto Worlds, two Johnny Lightning Hummers that just don't fit any of the Plano Cubbies, and the rest of the museum is green light. We didn't put on the auxiliary lighting in here, so it might be a little dim and blurry. Just an overview of what I've got for shelf space here. And then this is a whole bunch of different brands, but mostly M2 and Auto World. And there's Boba Fett just hanging out in Slave One. How you doing there, Boba? Oh, you got a passenger. Well, that's the video for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're after older Johnny Lightning, happy hunting. Should be a lot of fun. We'll see you in the next video. Coming soon.